I'd like to introduce the 2016 WRX STI that we that we have here. Uh, first of all, the body shell. We start with a standard WRX STI that Dominic kindly gave us from the States. Um, we dip it in a, a first of all heat it up to 400 degrees, dip it in a bath, and that process from starting cleaning the bodywork to finishing the fabricated welded body shell takes around 700 hours. Uh, you can see the, firstly the, the safety cage inside the car, all built to current FIA regulations. Pretty obvious, but what's not so obvious are the subtle tubes coming through to the, to the suspension pickup points and then down to the cross member. And that really allows you to put some stiffness into the body shell. That's vital from a safety perspective but also from a setup perspective as well. We've got something like 27,000 newtons per degree of stiffness in the body shell compared to something like four or 5,000 with a standard road car. And that really helps to tighten it up and get a good feel from it. And especially when you get more grip from the tires, stiffer suspension, you really need to tighten that car up. And so we push hard to get the, the shell stiffness as high as we can. Um, Moving on from that, the, the heart of the project, EJ20. It's a fantastic engine from the Subaru family. Um, it's been in, it's been in, in, in ProDrive and developed right from the early 90s and really is a strong unit. One of the big differences from the TT in 2016 to now is a dry sump tank. And that's something that, that really gave us a headache in TT. We've got these big wide uh, tyres which are a lot wider than a rally tyre and they're a slick, not a mouldy tyre. And that generated a lot of lateral G in corners. So that gave the wet sump system a real headache. With that we had to fit a dry sump system. And that's running at something like um, 4.5 bar all the time. And that really protects the, the, the bearings and the crankshaft and the, the spray bars on the pistons. And, when we finished the TT in 16, we had another a, a number of other small events to do, and the engine did about 600 kilometers, and it was predominantly worn out at that point. We had to throw the crankshaft in the bin, couldn't recover that. The bearings had worn out, the cams had worn out. It had served its purpose. Um, but to build in a bit more reliability, we redesigned the crankshaft for this year, con rods and pistons, and in, instigated the dry sump system. Following on from that, we've still got a port fuel injection. So we've got um, the injectors you can see here. They're to our specification and they're supplied by McLaren, as is the, the ECUs on the car. They're um, an F1 system from the early 2000s. And we're processing data at around about 1,000 hertz. So we've got a knock sensor on the engine that you can see just there. But one of the key elements following on from the TT we are mapping to head lifting, not to detonation. The fuel that we're running is very, very good, an elf racing fuel, and there is no debt in the engine. But what we do have, the fuse is the head lifting from the block. So we've got some machining between the, the head and the block down here, which goes to a pressure sensor, and this one is the key for us. So we're watching that all the time, putting more ignition into the engine, putting more, uh, 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 speed into the turbo and then watching for any activity on that sensor and when we arrive to some small pressure spikes we just come back a little bit with a turbo speed target um, after that you can see pneumatic boost control the wastegate is just round the other side on the turbo uh, Garrett turbo no restrictor on the engine and the wastegate there and Mark this weekend he's got three settings that he can choose from the car and we're roughly Position one, 550, 575 and 600 horsepower, they're our positions and we have to see how the weekend goes but because we've got a very important activity in a few weeks time, we really don't want to have to push the engine because there's not much time to react to that. So we're just playing with the, with the setting, see where we are with the time and then hopefully we're not forced into really having to demand um, um, any more from the engine. But like I say, yeah, the three specs, just upwards of around about 600 horsepower in our position three. Uh, transmission, six speed semi-auto, 100 bar shift system, paddle shift on the right hand side. We based the program on our rally hardware and that created the first problem. For the TT we needed, we needed a car that would, would 
would target around about 180 miles an hour. That meant that we, we couldn't achieve that with gear ratios. The biggest gears we put in the, in the gearbox, the biggest final drive meant that we had to rev the engine at yeah, around about 8,500 revs and that gives us 180, 288 um, kph. Um, after that, one of the key elements to win us some easy performance is a DRS. Um, and we've got a 14 degree change on the wing, which is about 20, 27 kilowatts, about 40 horsepower. And that really is an easy win for us, and it was a great project to do. From an engineering perspective, we had it fully mapped. We mapped the circuit, and we decided where we want to drop the wing, where we wanted to have it up, but Mark said, no way, I want to do that myself. I want that on the button. So we took all the automatic control off and then just let Mark control the DRS with the, with the button. So I'll just power that up and then you can move that. So it's a 10 bar pneumatic system and if you're doing 180 miles an hour, it's about 40 meters per second. So you really need to have the wing moving very quickly. Um, when you're covering that type of ground. Um, any any lift off in the throttle or a small application of the brake would normally, if Mark's demanding the wing to be in the down position, the low drag, low drag position, it would immediately come back up again. So we just drop it down, and that's in its down position now. And it's about 20 milliseconds to go up and down. system needs to be very aggressive because in the event of a problem it really needs to fail in the up position which is from a balanced chassis perspective. There's a 300 Newton variation on the rear and that really is critical in a very long steady state fifth or sixth gear corner. You need to have control of it and you can't have any, any variation. So we calculate the spring force on the rear wing to counter the air pressure um, at Vmax and then after that our actuators have to overcome that spring pressure. And just to demonstrate the, the, the force required, it's quite considerable, I have to push really hard. And we are just on the cusp of being corrected 180 miles an hour, 185 or 190, and the air will actually put that down. Not with the 5 mil gurney that we've got here, we're running a, a, normally a 10 mil gurney on the TT. We just come down because we don't need the rear grip, we need a little bit more top speed, but we can take that off. So if you see that we're struggling a little bit with speed this afternoon, I'm going to be busy or Arthur is the engine guy. We've put some more turbo speed in the engine and you might see this gurney come off. And if you do, you know we're starting to come to the end of the car's performance for the moment. Oh yeah, and there's always a driver element to it, yeah. We can always find points where he's lifting off the gas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from a suspension brake perspective, again, it's back to our old WRC heritage. We've got 380 mil discs, eight piston calipers. We'd normally have water cooling on the car for the World Rally Championship, but you just don't need that for TT or somewhere like that, somewhere like um, Goodwood Festival of Speed. So eight piston calipers with four um, pads per caliper. And the four pads per caliper are important. If you have a big, long pad, you tend to suffer some knockoff long brake pedal if you have any kind of high force lateral loads pushes the pistons back the next time the driver presses the brake you've got a long brake pedal so you really want to try to avoid that so a very big wheel bearing inherently stiff upright and uh, the brake arrangement that really gives you a nice feel and a nice responsive brake pedal which is important um, after that, our damper, um, it's made by a company called S XTC in the UK. They've been our technical partner for a very long period of time now. Four-way adjustable, pretty straightforward in terms of the normal architecture, but one element which is really nice, a standard shock McPherson type strut has a, a DU bush type arrangement. We've got a five bearing roller. so. We're actually doing a rain dance here this weekend and if we've got some low grip, humid, damp conditions that's where we really start to be quite good because we can manage our contact very well with our low friction dampers 
all the bearings, all the suspension on the car has roller bearings, thrust rollers, so you can pick everything up. If you're braking and accelerating, any longitudinal loads fed into the suspension, they don't turn into friction, and friction's your enemy when you're wanting to maximize the grip from the car. Um, so yeah, pretty straightforward. Um, after that, any, any questions, guys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The, the the gear shifts. It's actually it's not a, a, a conventional um, sequential with a barrel change. It's a H pattern gearbox, and we have a, a left right and a front and a back actuator, which really is mirroring your hand movement. And that we designed from a World Rally Championship perspective. That that if you have a half spin or a spin, you can press one button, come straight from six to neutral and take first very quickly. Whereas your conventional um, barrel type sequential gearboxes, it takes you a long time to go six, fifth, fourth, third, second, first with a normal actuator. So uh, it's a H pattern semi-auto gearbox. And we could normally shift between first and second. It's about 20 milliseconds and that, that relies on complex hydraulics and a, and a 100 bar system with, with filtering down to 15 microns with some really you know, high tech uh, control to do, to do that. And again, that's important from Mark's perspective, a long steady state corner, you can take the gears and there's no torque variation. So you can just drive around the corner on the point of grip with a very nice, with a very nice gear shift. But when Mark initiates a gear change, there's a bit of strategy going on. We close the wastegate, we prepare the engine with some ignition parameter, and then we make the shift. And then when we reintroduce the torque, then our turbo speed is still maintained at about 120,000. Yeah. Um, predictions, how shall do today? Predictions, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's always an element of sandbagging from everybody and, you know, Nick Heidfeld and the Mahindra, yeah, we don't know what, what, where their limits are, they don't know where our limits are, so we'll just have to wait and see, but we're working on the launch a little bit and, and when you've got such a short track, the start is vital for us. Um, lower grip conditions this morning, we were getting off the line from 0 to 100 in about in 3.1 seconds and for the moment we won't do much better. And I think on the first split there isn't there isn't anybody that, that that's any better at the moment. But we're working on that a little bit, and we might be able to find 0.2 or 0.25. But if we push the clutch a little bit too hard, we've got a what a $8,000 triple plate carbon clutch in there. I've got to break the bad news to Bubba that the gearbox needs to come off, and we need to reshim the clutch. So maybe lunchtime tomorrow we need to do that. Put one shim in there, and it's so important from this multi-plate clutch get the drive and that's the thing that does all the work you try to maximize your acceleration but protect the powertrain protect the drive shafts everything else try not to bog the engine and get a good clean start and then that's vital but you know we, yeah, we're, we're only interested in winning ever you know that's it that's all and that's all we try to do but yeah we'll see we'll see